Hi everybody, it's Neil here from ASCAD Services. Quick plug, ASCAD Services there. And this is my A3 prototype with Bill of Materials. I've got it open. If you're not familiar to open these, I can go to the output ribbon. And I've got a little tool here and it says edit prototypes. And when I open it, this should open in the default uh, directory for the prototypes. I'm using Advanced Steel 2021 look. And it says program data, Autodesk, Advanced Steel 21, GBR, shared support prototypes. That's the folder it's looking in. And I just pick the prototype I want to open. In this case, I've opened this one. You could, of course, go via your normal file open and you could go and find that path and you could open it from there so there's no difference really this is just a shortcut should take you directly to that directory that folder the prototypes folder okay so my guys uh, my client they want me to edit their prototype and one of the changes they've asked for is instead of this saying index they want it to say revision if I double click on this it opens up the properties of this table and you can see I've made some changes. The text is only too high, two points high rather than 2.5. And again, the headings, but there's nothing I can change in here. So if I click on index, look, there's not a label that I can uh, actually change. So I need to go and find this in the system and it's buried in one of the system databases. Scary stuff, system databases. Most of the people I train, I say, don't go in there and start uh, indiscriminately changing things. <laughs> you can do a lot of damage. But in this case, I'm going to show you how we change this, where we find it in the database and how we change it. So let's go to our home ribbon menu. Some of you may be familiar with management tools. So if I open management tools, you can see we've got some options here. The one that you're probably most familiar with is the defaults and the object property editor may be the preferred sizes, but you probably, if ever, come into table editor. So if I click on this, there's nothing in there. But if I click in the top left hand icon, it says open installed databases and a list of the installed databases that Advanced Still uses to run are here. And within these databases, we have a number of tables. So you can see it's quite extensive. There's a lot of awful lot of uh, changes you can make in here there's also a lot of potential for getting it wrong of course <laughs> so anyway the database we're looking at is the ASTA control structure so if I open this there's only a handful of tables in this database so we're not going to have to look hard for the one we want and the table we're looking for is the one that says error messages there so we're going to open this table and here we are and you can see there's quite a lot of entries in here so we need to find the entry that corresponds to these labels and I can tell you that if we go down to Uga's property uh, sheet on the left here Uga's property sheet we've got these error numbers and the range of numbers we're looking for range between 31404 and 31408 so i'm going to scroll down 31 to see even in here there's quite a lot 31404 there so this 31404 corresponds with index 31405 is author and you can see date description rev details I haven't got rev details turned on on mine but that would be the field if it was so the one we want to change is this one that says index so I'm going to highlight that okay and I'm going to change that to my custom wants revision so I'm going to change that to revision now when it comes to databases, there isn't a save as button or OK button or anything like that. What it does is when I make this change, it makes the change on the fly directly into the database. So I can close all this. Uh, I can close the management tools. Now, what's going to happen if I try and update this, it's going to still use index because I need to tell the system to now use the updated database. And I do that from the home ribbon menu. 
I've got this tool, Update Defaults, and we click on that. Alright, and oh, nothing's changed. What I need to do, I need to replace this revision table with a new one, and the new one will show that as revision. So how we do that, we're going to go to Labels and Dimensions. We're going to go to the Management Tool Palette there. We're going to use the drop down, and it says Revision Table. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bang one in. I'm not going to be too fussy about what it looks like at the moment because I'm going to edit it to look the same as mine. So the first thing I do, I only use one, one row here. And I also change the format. I use two point for all of my text in the revision table. Or else it's just a bit overpowering, it's a bit big. And again, so this is the revision column format is the text size it's going to use in the output for the table. So if this was populated, it would be at two point. I'm also going to change the size of the headings. That's this row here. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Missed one there, didn't I? Yeah, I did. And this one here. OK. So I've changed those. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the order of the column. So here's my one. I'm going to go to the columns. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of rev details because I don't use that. I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to use this button. It's going to remove it. And then I'm going to change the order here. So date is going to go up next to revision. So I'm going to use these. This will move it up and down the list. It now says revision date. And then I'm going to move description up above author. So now it's in the right order. Revision date description author. OK. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this a minute from there to there and I'm just going to drag all this out to that end point there so this one I'm going to drag to here description to there date to there all right so here's my new one I'm just going to move that out the way a minute I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to replace it with this one so I'm going to move from this end point here to that endpoint there. Oh, beg your pardon, clicked on the wrong one. So I'm going to move that from endpoint there to endpoint there. Just going to make sure this is aligned. It looks like it is. It's done. OK, so from now on, what I would do, I've opened the bill of materials uh, drawing uh, prototype. So I would just go file save and I would resave it. And then what I would do generally, I would delete the uh, bill of materials, delete the bill of materials and I go save as and I'd save this to the drawing prototype without bill of materials. So I don't need to do every single one. I do every other one, anything with BOM on I'll do and then I save it and then delete the bill of materials, then save as and save it as the new one. Uh, it's quite possible I want this on other drawing sheets. So what I can do, I can go clipboard, copy with base point and I'm going to say this is my base point. And I'm going to, I've already got A4 open. So I'm going to go here, delete this. Now watch what happens when I go control V. It actually puts it over here, look. Because the page is a different size, it's not going to exactly put it back where the old one was. But I can just drop it in and I can then move this to end point, wherever that goes there, look. Job done. File save, so I just go save because I've got it open, bill of materials. I then delete the bill of materials and I go save as and I change that to the UK assembly A4. I do the same thing here. So all my single ones, I'd open up the ones with a bomb on. Do those. The rest of the assemblies, I just open the ones with a bomb on. GAs, of course, you've got a revision table in your GAs there. So you'd open those. And if you use the multi ones exactly the same process no different the bill of materials exactly the same sorry the revision control table is exactly the same in each of these so that's it guys that's how you change that it's in management tools table editor click ask to control structure error messages and you're looking for the Uger's property sheet 
in the range 31404 and 31408. And that is the list of those. Once we've done it, we just close it, update the defaults, change the revision table, job done. And uh, there's another one for your library. So that's it, guys. Just a short video, 10 minutes or so. Uh, have a good day. Have fun with Advanced Deal as always. And until next time, um, goodbye.